Welcome moms. We are on session 10, anniversaries, birthdays, and holidays. Jesus left us a perfect example of remembrance when he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 24, when Jesus had given thanks, he broke it and said, do this in remembrance of me. So we're gonna be talking about what is usually very much dreaded is the upcoming anniversaries, birthdays, and holidays, and to share with my friend here that I'll introduce in a moment, the things that she did during those times, as well as hearing about her beautiful girl. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So Rebecca, you came into Grieving Moms about when? I was about a month and a half after wow. Jessica's passing. Wow. And so what made you think, I need I need to be with other moms. I didn't know um, that I needed to be with other grieving moms, but thank goodness God put um, a wonderful woman in my life that was attending church with me, and she knew you from the Angels organization. Oh, um, Trail Angels, The yeah. Trail Angels, uh -huh. yes. And she told me about the group at Saddleback. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you to her. And I'm so glad that she did that. And I just love how the friendships have developed in this in this group through our losses. And so, Rebecca, you you just loved it so much. You felt the healing begin that when Carrie said, I feel I'm really being called to another ministry, that's when you and beautiful Paige just went. How did that happen? So uh, she mentioned that we might be taking a break because she needed a vacation. And Paige is the one that stepped up and said, no, uh -uh, we can't stop because what if a new mom comes in and they need, you know, they need yeah. the group like we did. And so she said, but I can't do it alone. And I just, God called me and I raised my hand and I said, I'll do it with you. And that's how it began. <laughs> and, of all, and of all those ladies, Paige. Sweet, right. Sweet, innocent, quiet Paige. And that just really really spoke to me because I was like, wow, she really, she, she wanted, wanted it more than she was afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And no, and, and God really put us together because I, we just, we you worked really so well together. We either. really didn't just from attending the group, yeah. but, uh, we, we are yin and yang. We work <laughs> so well together, you know? So Rebecca, tell me a little bit about sweet Jessica. Um, so Jessica Summer McIntyre, uh, my sweet 20-year-old. Um, she passed on November 17th of 2017. Uh, she was a victim of suicide. Um, and she uh, was a sweet, sweet girl. She was my baby. I have triplets. I also have a son, Oscar. And uh, her sisters, Jessica has two sisters, Samantha and Danielle. And she uh, is an identical twin and she struggled with mental illness for many years mm. uh, participated in her therapy wanted to get better tried really hard um, but she had fortunately lost the battle mm. i'm so sorry rebecca thank you and here at grieving moms we we say a lot that when we talk about our grief it helps to take away its power it has on us usually it's not something we want to talk about it really does get us worked up right it's uh i know that in hearing the moms talking about you know their grief over the course of this this weekend that we've been together you could just you could just see their shoulders rise up and the, the tension that comes there so it's important that we keep talking about it because it does take the power away so when we're talking about anniversaries birthdays and holidays was there anxiety for you that was building up when it was Jessica's birthday, the anniversary of her going to heaven and the dreaded hol holidays. Definitely. Um, in my situation, uh, like I said, Jessica passed on November 17th. Just a week later was Thanksgiving, you mm -hmm. know. So that first year, that first holiday season, it, it was rough, you know. It was really rough. We went through the motions because we had always done the same things. We were very big on traditions. Um, I didn't never wanted my kids to wonder where they were going to be for, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. We were just close knit, and we always did everything together. 
uh, that year it was just a blur because it was so close. Mm. It was just so, so close. And there was no, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but you know, you're just in such a daze. You're frozen. You're frozen. Yeah. Exactly. You're frozen. frozen from your landslide. You're just, uh, going through the motions, you know, um, the following year, I really can't say that it got better at that point. Mm. It just, it, because of when she passed, the holiday seasons have been difficult, but we have found ways to find the joy. You know, yeah. one of Jessica's favorite seasons was this harvest time, this October. She just loved, you know, all of the decoration. She loved decorating the house. She mm -hmm. loved to dress up in costumes, mm -hmm. you know, for Halloween. And this is the first year, 2020. Wow that I have been able to decorate, to bring pumpkins into the house, to do my mantle. And I did it for her. Mm. And it really caused me um, to experience the joy of the season. It really shifted for you instead of just the absence of, you know, her not being there during the holidays, which is really the first year. We're so incredibly, we, we have this love that we don't know what to do with it. They're, they're, they're not there. So in the presence of that, we're like, oh, Jessica will help us decorate, but, and then you stop. So I love the shift that you had. And, and it did take some time, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like, let's do it as a fun memory and, and changing that perspective on it and then have that joy come right back in. So how do you usually prepare for these events? And, you know, is there... Is there something that you did with the family? Did you talk about like, okay, it's going to be the anniversary or did you, how did that work for you? Mm -hmm. So um, the funny thing is, is that uh, I think that sometimes what happens is that we have a plan and it doesn't work out the way that we think it's going to. Coming up into her first year anniversary of going to heaven, I thought we would maybe go out to dinner. She loved sushi. And I thought maybe we would go to dinner and we'd all get California rolls because that was her idea of sushi, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it didn't work out that way. We just ended up gathering at her resting place. Mm. Um, and it, it couldn't have been a more peaceful time for me, really, because of Jessica passing, it kind of broke our family. You know, we yeah. all just kind of went into little pieces and at yeah. least at that moment we were able to come together um, what i would recommend uh, for any anniversary or anything is to have a plan but also don't be afraid to deviate and let something else happen uh, and don't be afraid to not do anything at all yeah as kay always says when you can you will exactly and, and i think the worst part is typically preparing for it the anxiety about what are we going to do and and what is it going to feel like especially that first year so if you make it through the first year it's the first year of the first all of that that happens i like what you said about changing things up and and you can deviate a little bit away from there because a lot of moms feel like oh my goodness if we don't do this exactly the same we're going to lose the memory of our loved one and that's mm -hmm. so not true no never because that's not what they would want us to do right no. mm -mm. So talk for a moment about leading your moms. How do you feel like this has helped you in your own grieving journey? Well, it's, it's really been amazing um, and it, it's so healing. It really is. Um, I think it's true that uh, I've, I've come to realize that we have a purpose. We're here for a reason and there is nothing that happens by accident. Amen. We are chosen, you know, to go through and bear whatever afflictions we have to bear here on earth and i think that god took this and he turned it into my purpose because when i'm with the moms there is nothing more healing nothing more healing than being with someone that understands truly understands your heart your grief your pain and and to me it helps me more than it helps them They'll never know, but it really does. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And, and Rebecca actually is, I was sorry, I started the, Saddleback Church has been my home church for some, over 20 years. And when God called me to move up here to Bend, Oregon, 
you know, we had Carrie step in prayerfully. It was just beautiful. And so it was nice to be able to see when Carrie left that you guys stepped up. And so it just continued on. And now Rebecca, like, has, what, 20 moms that if you had everybody together, just about? You know, and it's an honor to have taken over your original group. It really mm. is. But uh, definitely, you know, the moms come in and out. Um, and the, the ones that stay, they need to, they stay for as long as they need to. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, comforting for us. Yeah. Well, and, and because we're grieving, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know how that's ever going to turn out. We have nice, but I, I love that there's an accountability there with the groups because when you don't show up or you're feeling like, nope, and Satan wants you to stay home, your group is going to be texting you or call you and say, come on, Rebecca, you've got to show up. We're really missing you. And then usually that's the best antidote for them. Definitely. So, and I, and I do want to say thank you for taking that and keeping it going because it's, it's certainly not my group. It's, it's our group. It's yeah. every, it's our ministry. And it just makes my heart just so happy to know that that's still going on. And I go down and visit from time to time. And so you had shared with me that you have your favorite scripture that is Romans 15, 13. And Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rebecca, how would you say that that scripture helped you? Well, first of all, Jessica put that scripture on my heart because it was one of her favorites. And it talks about hope, you know? Mm. And if you don't have hope, I, I have a hope because Jesus is my father you know jesus is everything and so he's promised me that i'm going to be with jessica again that i will be mm, reunited with her and i hang on to that hope that's so beautiful well again thank you so much for what you're doing you and Paige that couldn't be here and i know mm -hmm. that she would be probably sitting right next to you and uh but may god continue to bless the ministry and you and your family and um yeah, you have been a big blessing to the moms that are out there that are going to be experiencing the first. And again, thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, Jackie. We love you. Mwah.